Bet you think I'm getting hassled, don't you? Nope. But that has to be one of the scariest aspects of van life. Parking and dealing with police officers and the illegal status of living in a vehicle. But I really don't have to deal with that up here where I am now and how it is right now. And this area has a long tradition of people living in vehicles and all kinds of different non-stealthy vehicles. And I also think, you know, stealth isn't a big thing for me in my van life, which is different than a lot of people. So, you know, I kind of wanted to talk about parking a little bit in this video, especially because it is so different for me. But I have my own issues as well. So that lady in the beginning of the video was letting us know that they're closing a gate for the night that they usually don't close. And they wanted to make sure we had the option of either leaving or staying for the night. It was up to us. They wanted to make sure we were safe. So the second one that you saw there was just, uh, there was a wedding at a facility and a fight broke out and immediately the p police were there. So obviously they're taking care of situations that need taking care of and they're not hassling us. And in fact, sometimes I wish they would. <laughs> I know that sounds terrible, but what I mean is, a lot of people take advantage of the fact that we have community policing here where they're, you know, <laughs> they're pretty easygoing, but they don't enforce the 72 hour law or anything. And certain people take advantage of that and they happen to be the worst kind of people. So it kind of goes together that they would be selfish, I guess you could say, and not move around enough so that there's this flow with it. And, um... There was one night recently in one of the main parking spaces in this area where the police asked if, um, they didn't ask. The police came and said, we want to let you know there's an event here on Monday, so we're going to be asking everybody to leave starting Sunday night. And um, the, the it isn't really legal that people park here, but we just allow it and look the other way. So we'd appreciate it if you could find an, other arrangements uh, for a few days and I was like no problem I don't stay in one place you know more than a night or two at most and uh, thanks for letting us know and they're just the nicest here the first police man that I asked about parking in the area told me well we wouldn't want to tell anybody that they couldn't live in their vehicle and it was like Wow, I can't believe he just said that to me. I'm like, I'm home. <laughs> but I'm guessing the main reason is, I mean, it's very liberal here, obviously, in northern, far northern California. But also we have a big homeless problem. So, of course, um, there's a lot of people living in vehicles. There's a housing problem as well. And, you know, what are they going to do, you know? <laughs> so... My situation is very lucky. I'm very lucky to be in this situation. Um, I mostly park in certain public lots and areas that have been deemed okay for parking at. Some more so than others. Things change over time. New construction goes up next to old parking areas. Or people come and are problematic and then they shut the whole thing down. Um, or put up a giant... Uh, police camera and blinking light but for the most part it's really nice and actually some of the spots are really really nice so I don't often park in residential areas I just feel like uh, pretty uncomfortable on the privacy issue both for myself and for them and I feel like most 
neighborhoods have spots where the residents regularly park and I have no idea what those spots are unless I wait till really late and then I feel like it's creepy for a a scary van to pull up in the middle of the night <laughs> behind your vehicle next to your house. It's weird. But even with all the spots that I have to park here, and there are a lot, I still get tired of parking in the same spots. And I still feel like I'm in the community's business, you know? So, as you probably can guess by now, if you don't already know me and my channel, I don't move around a lot. I'm based in Humboldt County right now. And I have a sewing studio here, so it makes it hard to leave because I do need to sort of manage my business here. But that is the goal, getting a bigger vehicle and having my power station that I have now to be able to run the whole operation in the vehicle. But for now, I'm in one spot and it's got to be the best spot for parking. I wanted to talk about stealth a little bit more. I actually, I'm not stealthy at all. I haven't been stealthy in so long. I don't even know what stealth is anymore. Like if I had to go hide somewhere, like if I went to another town or area and actually had to hide and worry about these things, oh my God, so scary. Like, so my van life experience really is different from others. Um, and on a larger note, I think that stealth is something more of the past. I mean, I know we still need to be stealthy. You've got your white van in the middle of the city. Um certain situations of course but I think everybody in society is pretty well aware now that people live in vehicles I mean not only because of van life but because of the homelessness problem and living in vehicles in general I mean one of the hottest things right now is car camping so people are aware of it now I think stealth isn't what it used to be and up here in particular there's a history of making crazy wild vehicles for living in so um yeah, definitely stealth is not a thing up here. So I'm kind of spoiled. I need to make sure I'm able to actually travel when I want to <laughs> and be stealthy. By the way, my last van was a 93 Chevy G20 and it was spray painted in a galaxy type pattern. I mean, I did it myself. So one of the reasons I got the white van that I have now was to become a little more stealth and tone it down just a bit so that's what I did so a big consideration for me for the future between a small RV and a small school bus for a future rig is that I'm going to get older and I'm going to want to find somewhere that I can park more permanently and I'll need a vehicle that can do that can be accepted into RV places or whatever so stealth not stealth but niceness <laughs> of a vehicle acceptability is going to become an issue for me at, at some point I think but if I I'm really dreaming of a school bus I can't help it so I mean look where I'm from there's school buses everywhere <laughs> my whole life so well I think in the end most communities are going to have to start dealing with this quote-unquote issue and it doesn't have to be such an issue if we do start dealing with it as I've said before there need to be a lot more places that are normalized for this type of living there are so many different things that could be done so many different arrangements that could be made including paid arrangements and all of this would help the community and the vehicle dwellers both feel more comfortable both feel safer both feel normal <laughs> so that said I'm wishing you good parking and safety out there thanks for listening to my video and have a good night